Guess what day it is? It's Sunday! It's time to worship! The house is so simple Faith like a child I give you an inch and you Take me a mile I feel the wind rush And the thunder roll Two feet on the water Only one way to go yeah. I don't gotta be afraid no more no. Cause I know you up through the storm I'm more than just a
loved worshiping with you guys. Now let's pray and get into our lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these kids and I thank you for these leaders who are so willing to teach your word to them. And I just pray that they feel your love and your presence and your peace that surpasses all understanding and that wherever they are, whether they're here or at home, just wherever they are in life, that they feel you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, I am going to give my sister a call. Hello? Hey, uh, can you say, hang on for the loop? Hang on for the what? <laughs> loop? Yeah. Three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Have you ever heard the phrase, save the drama for your mama? Yes, more times than I care to count. Well, today we're talking about save your mama from the drama. We are talking about family drama and how to deal with it. Ricky, who would you say is the wackiest person in your family and why? Uh, honestly, I'd have to say probably me. Because, oh. Mo mostly because of the things that I've done in the Loop show that no one in my family would ever do. <laughs> I would say my dad, for sure. Uh, we were on a road trip, and he stuck a green Skittle up his nose to be funny. He was gonna blow it out, but he got it stuck. <laughs> yeah, I know. So speaking of family, we actually have some of our family members that are gonna join us in a challenge today. But first, let's talk to Kirby. Hey everyone, it's me, Kirby. If you don't remember me, that's okay. I've been in a few past episodes, but today we are continuing with our series on drama. We're talking about friendship drama, more than friendship drama, and today, family drama. There's a lot of family drama that can go down. Yeah, you can pick your friends, but you can't really choose your family. However, you can choose how you act within your family, how you love your family, and how you forgive your family. Yes, my older brother and I, we did fight every now and again because we're siblings, it happens. But the truth is, is that we always made an effort to forgive one another and to move on from that. If we wanna get real, real deep, I did have a lot of family drama, specifically with my parents. And my brother and I, we were all that we kinda had for a big season of our life. So we stuck close together. We made sure to have that unity and to have that friendship and, and to work on that and to be there for one another. So what do we do when Whenever there is family drama, we can serve, we can love, we can compromise, and we can recognize where we were at fault in the drama, whether it was through arguing or being negative, and we can learn from that. Honestly, a lot easier said than done because, you know, love is hard. But I want you to know that sometimes love, it's not just about feelings, it's a choice. We need to extend that love to people in our family. So let's seek to lead with love and to listen. If there's a problem, let's go into it with the mind of Christ, with the likeness of Christ, in order to bring peace, in order to show mercy, in order to show grace, and to listen. Thanks, Kirby. All right, so now we are going to get into our challenge, which is the phone home challenge. Call a family member. You have a minute and a half to get them to say the three words your partner picked. So here are the three words that I picked. And here are the three words that I picked. Yes, there so you go. There you go. Thank you. We are going to be calling our sisters. sisters. Woohoo! You can use clues to get your family member to the word, but you cannot say the word or rhyme it. The winner gets a delicious and nutritious smoothie. The not winner gets something else, dot, dot, dot. Oh. So I'm gonna be calling my sister first. Her name is Jennifer. Are you excited to call Jennifer? Yeah! I'm super excited too, and I know she's excited too, to meet you all. All right, here we go. Hello. Jen, hi! Hey! The timer has started, so I'm gonna give you some clues. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so on VeggieTales, there's a character named Junior... Asparagus. Yes. All right, at the end of the Loop episodes, we ask people to comment, like, like and subscribe. Yes! And sometimes when teenage boys talk to teenage girls, they can be... Nervous, awkward. Weird. Yes, awkward! Jen, you nailed it! Good, I'm so glad. Did we beat Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell she's my sister? <laughs> I am now so nervous. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna give my sister a call. Okay. And what's her name? Alicia. Alicia. Hi, hello. Okay, uh, our time has started. Um, okay. All right, guess these words. Um, the the dog from Full House's name is what? Oh my God. Um, Sparky, is it Fluffy? 
be. No, okay, next one. Um, an Italian seasoning is what? Uh, paprika. It's, it's a seasoning. It starts, um, it's, it starts with a vowel. All spice. Um, okay, it starts with a vowel. Uh, or, uh, or oregano? Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, space rock flying by is not an asteroid, but a... Shooting star? No, okay, what what is the powder cleaner that we use at home? The, the powder cleaner, uh, resolve, scrubbing. No, the powder one, uh. The powder one. Oh, no, it's okay, we lost. Paprika. <laughs> now are you ready for the next family scene? Here we go. Watch carefully everything that happens as Mary and Bill and George and their parents finish supper. Well, who's gonna help me do the dishes tonight? Why, I'd like to, Mother, but I've got so much homework. How about you giving me a hand for a change, Howard? Me? I should say not. I mean, I, uh, I've got to read my paper. Let Bill do it. Oh, oh well, some other time, Mother. Uh, some of the fellows are waiting for me down at the corner. Here, I'll help, Mother. And it's my opinion that if everyone in the family would lend a hand once in a while, we'd get the work done that much quicker. Then we could all go out afterwards and do anything we wanted to. Which type of answer do you think is best? One like Mary's, Father's, Bill's, George's, or an entirely different one? You know, I think I can answer this for everybody. No, 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 no. Probably do something completely different. If it were me, I would want to be the first one to help out. But the reality is, is that sometimes I'm not always the first one to help out. I mean, did you see those people? They were the first ones to get out of that situation. I mean, except for George, but you know, he was complaining the whole time. Guilt tripping everybody? Really? Really? When you're in a situation like that, what do you do? When your parents ask you to help out around the house, are you the first to go and help? Or are you the first to make an excuse and try and get out of that? I mean, seriously though, what is one thing that you could go home and do today that could help your family? It can be big, it can be small, it doesn't matter as long as it's thoughtful and positive. In fact, we have a few life hacks to help. Hello, pals. I hope you're good. Look at what I'm wearing. It's a sweater. I'm wearing wow. a sweater in California. What? That can only mean one thing. The weather has finally cooled down. California weather can be very intense. Sometimes I will open up my weather app and it will say smoke or fire. Things are finally starting to mellow out and my electric bill will no longer be scary high. Oh, spooky, yeah. You mean like the scary clothes monster in your room? You know about that? You know, you could just like clean it. But I don't want to. Cleaning is not glamorous. It's not something that we love to do. But just like with anything else, really the hardest part of cleaning or tidying up is starting. Usually we spend a lot more time thinking about not wanting to do things than it takes to actually do things. A trick that I have taught myself is this tip number one. If it takes less than a minute to do, do it now. I've had so many staring contests with cups, but I'll let you in on a little secret. They don't move unless you move them. So, you know, maybe instead of staring at the cup, just move it to the sink or the dishwasher. Did you pick up the cup? And if you did pick up the cup, do you feel better? I bet you do. And now that you've gotten up off your couch or your bed or whatever and picked up the cup, I bet you want to pick up more things. Or maybe you don't. Say you're cleaning up a bigger area. Don't go in there and pock yourself down immediately thinking, oh, I have a whole room to clean. Maybe pick a corner of the room or a specific area of the room. Is your bed made? If not, then make your bed. I am always shocked by just what making a bed can do. It just looks better. Tip number three, or maybe just point number three. This is more of just a beam of encouragement shining down on you like the sun in my eyes. I know when I was y'all's age, there was maybe a little more tension in the house just because my parents and I didn't really know what to do with each other. It was just uncharted territory. But that territory is easier to chart when you can see the floor. Helping around the house, cleaning up, it's just a way to say, I care about you enough to put this bowl in the sink. Not really my first idea of how I would tell somebody I love them, but I mean, like, I am going to get rid of that clothes monster, but before I do, I'm gonna go try and find that dog that I said hi to earlier. Bye. We learned something new today. We learned something new. Uh, well, I lost. 
I'm not happy that you lost. I'm just happy that I don't have to eat whatever you're about to eat. Well, smoothies have always <laughs> gone great for us here on The Loop Show, so bring in the smoothie! Bring in the smoothie! Ooh, that first one looks really nice. Wow, and this <gasps> other... Oh, oh, no, oh, oh. Ah! Ah! Not even cold. <laughs> don't tell me that. Oh my goodness! It's cold. Well, I'm gonna try my smoothie. It's really pretty. I love pink, and it smells like strawberries. Oh man. Okay. Why would I smell it? Why would I smell it? That's really good. Can I call a friend to? Drink this for me. It's called Mama's Meatloaf Smoothie. <laughs> the contents are meatloaf and peas and carrots. Well, and I guess the beef jerky stick. <laughs> you cannot be serious. How much meatloaf is this to fill this giant glass of it? <sighs> it's not even going up the straw. It's so thick. We might have to get a spoon. Oh. It's not up there yet. It's just staying in the straw. Look at this. This. Oh. oh it's. Mm. Oh, do we have a trash? We have a trash can. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's that bad. Oh, Jamie. Oh, it, it just tastes like pre-chewed food. Today in the kitchen, we are learning how to make the perfect family drama sandwich. Step one. Get some weird bread. This bread is your family. You don't get to choose your bread just like you don't get to choose your family. Step two. Spread grape jelly on one slice of bread and spread mustard on the other slice. Schmooze them together while saying, Mom, he won't stay on his side. This will get the drama started. Step three. Pinch your sandwich for no reason. Step four. Add a bed of lettuce topped with ham to your sandwich. Place turkey nearby your sandwich. Enforce a bedtime for ham. Arrange the ham as if to say, it's not fair that turkey gets to stay up later than me. Step five. On top of the ham, add the vegetables you refused to eat last night at dinner. The veggies that got you sent to your room. If your family never eats dinner together, add chili. Step six. Add something stressful to your drama sandwich, like new baby food, or the responsibilities of a pet. Step seven, garnish your sandwich with a sore spot. Might we suggest a handful of your siblings' toys you are specifically told not to mess with? Something that will remind the eater of your drama sandwich, we're fighting. Fill your family sandwich with this kind of drama and your life will be filled with indigestion. For a sandwich without all the drama, follow this recipe. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. No matter what's in the middle of your crazy family sandwich, let love bind it all together in perfect harmony. The happy-go-lucky families that we see on TV or on family vlogs, that's not always a true representation of what families are like in real life. Honestly, there's a lot of hardships and brokenness and complication that can come with a family. We're allowed to feel within family drama, but the important thing is how we go about resolving family drama when we have a part to play and if we've been affected by it. And that's why I want to bring us back to Colossians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. We are to make allowance for each other's faults. 
meaning that we're not perfect. We're all gonna let each other down and we need to keep that in mind whenever there's family drama, that we need to be willing to forgive other people. But the second thing I wanna stress is how it says clothe yourselves with love. Love is what binds us together. And when we keep in mind that love is the one thing that we can choose to show people whenever it gets hard, we can know that that's gonna bind us together. That's gonna keep unity, that's gonna keep harmony, and that's going to keep peace. I'm speaking from experience. When I was younger, my parents got divorced and that was really hard for me and my brother, my mom and my dad, my whole family. One thing that I really had to learn through that was one, to not shove down my emotions and to actually process what I was feeling amidst all the drama but to also keep my mind set on things above and to know that there is a hope, there's a future, and that the brokenness that I was in and, and maybe you might be in with your family, it doesn't have to be like that forever. So be encouraged that even though families are hard and drama comes, we can get through it because Christ is with us. His love, His power, His might, and His provision. Not only is God our Father, but He's our friend. So. Push on, push on my friends and keep running the race because God is with you, He is rooting for you, and so am I. I had such a fun time being here and sharing my heart with all of you guys on all kinds of different drama. But if you wanna see more of me, you can check out my YouTube channel right here because I'm posting content all the time and I would love to see your friendly faces over there. So go check it out. But without further ado, I'll sign off right here. And I just wanna let you guys know that you are loved, you are enough, and I am so thankful that I got to meet you guys and have a fun time here on The Loop Show. Kirby, thank you so much for joining us this month. Yeah, thank you for all the great advice that you've given us about dealing with drama with family, with friends, and more than friends. Yeah, every family is different. You may not get to choose your family, but you do get to choose to make a difference. Lead with love. Ditch the drama. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. We cannot choose our families, but we can choose to lead with love. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much that you've put us in our families for a reason, God. No matter what's going on in our families, God, I thank you that you give us the strength and the power to love them well. And I pray that we would do that as we continue on in an attitude of prayer with heads still bowed and eyes still closed. Maybe for you, you're in a season where maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you don't feel a part. Let me tell you that God has called you, no matter what your family looks like, to be a part of His family. And in His family, you are loved. You are cared for. You belong. So much so, God wanted you so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, to die for you and for me. That through Jesus, we could have a relationship with God. That we are a part of His family. We belong. And maybe you're here today and you say, that's what I want. That's what I need. I wanna be a part of God's family. I'm ready to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Hands going up all over. Well, here's what we do. We are a family here at church. And so we pray out loud and together with those who are making that decision. So repeat after me. Dear God, I recognize that I'm broken and I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you were the son of God, that you died and rose again for me. Jesus, I ask you, to come into my life, to make me brand new. Thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. If you made that decision today, I want you to know that we're proud of you. You are a part of God's family. Don't keep that news to yourself. Celebrate with your family, celebrate with your leaders here and know that we're celebrating with you too. We love spending time with you today. I really hope that God was just moving in you. If you enjoyed being with us today, be sure that you follow us on Instagram, iHeartKidsWV, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, it's good to see you.